Doctor, so um, I'll just ask the first question. Um, Malaysians have been living under the lockdown for about a year and a half now. And finally, for those who are fully vaccinated, they get to enjoy some freedom. So what are your thoughts on this? Thank you for these questions. I think everybody is uh, rejoicing with this uh, policy, uh, especially those who are um, uh, vaccinated. And it's a kind, kind of like a reward. Uh, for me, it's a bonus for all. So um, thanks for the effort as well for allowing this to do uh, to happen. But however, there's a, lot, a few things that we need to look into this uh, policy um, uh, details in details. First of all, um, you see that um, when we have this uh, policy, we have uh, divided into those uh, travel to see your loved one, and also you can eat uh, eat into in the restaurants, and there's uh, can pray pray in the prayers. Uh, institutes and also you can do sport eh? outdoor and semi-outdoor so um everything is uh, there's a good also there's a bad side for me uh, we have to look into each of each of which part that we are looking into now yeah thank you tina yep and uh i just want to uh, address some of the commenters at this at this point of time like uh, guys Good evening. Uh, how are you guys doing? And thank you for the questions. I see that in the comment section, there are already questions already, uh, oh. especially Afrin, uh, who's talking about pregnancy and stuff. You are oh. in the right place today because we're going to be talking about that. Uh, Dr. Tan is actually going to address this issue. So stay with us for a while. And uh, we're going to be talking about all these topics. And whatever questions that you have, leave them in the comment section and we'll get at them uh, somewhere closer to the end of the stream. So in... So there are, you know, a couple of relaxations uh, here, Dr. Tan. We have, yeah. you know, uh, vaccinated, fully vaccinated people being able to dine in at restaurants in phase two states. And if you are a uh, parent of an of a teenage uh, of teenage children, or if you are a long distance couple, you will be able to travel across state to see each other. So, what do you think? Uh, what What are your what What would you, What's your advice here? Uh, because a lot of people, you know, are a bit worried about what they can do and what can, they cannot do so that they won't spread this virus. All right. I think, first of all, I will share, share with you some of the facts that when you're vaccinated, yeah, what is considered as vaccinated? Meaning that you have completed, if those are vaccines, two doses, you completed 14 days after you complete the second dose is considered as uh, completed, yeah, completed that uh, vaccine. Or those who have one dose as well, you give one dose and then 14 days from there. So if you have this, you know, if you have these two dose completed with, after 14 days, you consider as eligible for this SOP. First of all, um, for those who want to dine in, uh, in the restaurants, definitely uh, currently the restaurant is open, but only for vaccinated, fully vaccinated uh, 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 right yet, yeah. So what you need to do is that when you go in, you have to really show your digital app, right? And then you have to go into the uh, the vaccinated table. Uh, the vaccinated table actually there's a lot of SOP. They they need to be separate. Uh, cut down fifty percent of the vaccinated uh table. Let's say there's four person per table. You only cut down into two, yeah. And also when you eat in, uh, that restaurant, uh, definitely you have. Uh, my advice is that you need to really wear the mask until your food is on your table, yeah. Uh, only take off the mask so quickly fin finish your meal and quickly put it off even though you want to stay stay there uh stay there for some time to chit chat with your friend you need to be uh 100 percent always on the mask during the eating time don't don't speak because um currently a lot of um, the covid and also the variances they can transmit through speaking and also air so for me um during your off mask better don't talk uh, better just eat first, right? So um, when you finish your meal, um, it's possible you just need to, you know, go back as soon as possible. Don't stay there so for long. But do you see the small print in a uh, part of the uh, protocol saying that uh, there will be a, a mask for each of the restaurant to show how many workers is vaccinated or not vaccinated? Uh, before you enter this restaurant. So this is your decision whether you want to enter or not because uh, the, the, the problem is that... Um, when you enter the uh, restaurant with a high high percentage of uh, workers with, without vaccinate, uh, vaccine, so uh, you have the risk to get contracted infection. Remember, when you have vaccinated, it doesn't mean that you're already protected from infection. However, you can have, you know, uh, repeat uh, COVID infection, but maybe in the mouth form only. It will prevent you from severe disease, 100%, can prevent you into death for 100%. But you might still get infected and you can transmit 
to other other person yeah however um recently also a study shows that in Netherlands they have uh do a study on uh, vaccinated uh, uh personnel who vaccinated two dose yeah they whether they will transmit the disease or not and also get infected or not so both uh, for transmission and also both for infection is the uh, the vaccine protection is up to 70 percent 70 percent however this study is due on the previous variant which is the alpha but currently the delta and others uh, we yet to wait for the data so currently we still unable to tell you whether it's safe or not to open the mask in the public so when you eat in the restaurant there is some things that you really have to uh, look into you know uh, look into the um the sop and also those uh uh what i want to say is that uh, look into uh the the person that handle the food yeah whether they are vaccinated or not. if you want to dine dine in so you have to take a risk lah. so mm. for uh for for what i want to say is that um for others like when you want to uh visit your loved one or you know the parents want to visit their children at 18 years old and be, below okay i think we can plan ahead we can you know we can plan ahead uh, beforehand also if let's say you can because you know that this facility is a bonus if you don't want to do it it's better because the, the, currently the the case is so high um for me um i personally still say that you don't you know if you because the sop is a choice it's like you can do it either you want to do it or you can choose not to do it for me currently in this such a peak i think you have to choose whether you want to risk yourself or not for me i i uh, strongly believe that everybody is a very uh, you know very intelligent to choose whether the risk is high to take or not in this situation yeah mm. so as a doctor definitely in the meanwhile i think it's still very high risk to go out yeah mm. so doctor, I, the, I wanted to ask that even hmm. though these sops relaxations are only for those who are fully vaccinated but what are the hmm. risks that we are looking at right now you know it might sound uh, quite safe because I'm already fully vaccinated, so I get to enjoy some freedom. But what are the things that we should be cautious of if we were um, to enjoy this? Okay, um, for for me, um, currently, even though you are vaccinated, you're still a able to get infected or transmit to others. You see, so the risk is there. Um, if you um, if you meet somebody is not vaccinated uh, um, you know vaccinated out, um, at home or you know when you go back home you meet somebody is not vaccinated you definitely will bring the disease back to them as well as uh, if you want to improve um, improve the situation definitely there's a lot of effort you need to put in definitely just now I have uh, give some example about it dining in in uh, in a restaurant dining in restaurant actually is I think everybody one and a half year you know at, eat at home you know bring back already used to it i don't think this is uh you know uh, uh, uh for everybody is like a craving to go out now because everybody also fear of getting COVID. i i can assure you a lot of, of our you know our friend here every day you hear that oh i got COVID positive so many people beside you and nearby you is already positive for COVID. so for me this is not the time to you know um, relax a bit i think you should you know take a chance to you know protect yourself and your loved one okay so for those who uh and I continue with those who want to go back home to see the, you know, the loved one, you know, the loved one and also the, uh, your uh, 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 children who are 18 years old. Children 18 years old currently still not yet uh, vaccinated. Definitely, there is a chance that uh, we can spread the disease to them or they can also spread to us as well. Even though we are vaccinated, we, are, we can carry this disease. So there's a lot of way that, um, there's a lot of way that, um, uh, there's a lot of way you can handle this like if let's say you want to use these facilities right first of all you might you know you might uh do some cell tests you know now currently we, we you know we have this uh, saliva test kit uh which is uh currently still um under kkm have already talked about uh using it uh for your rapid test so you might consider this modality uh uh do two time then before you want to go back to see your loved one or your uh your your children's so you might need to do two time tests, uh, meaning that the first time and three days apart, second time when the, the, the day should be the day, the second test should be the day that you want to travel. So, but for me, during these two tests, uh, if these two tests is negative, definitely it's safe to go back. However, if you that day still symptomatic, meaning that you're still running nose or you have some sore throat, definitely that is a, not a good sign for you to travel back uh, to see them. Huh? And also when you see your loved one or your children, less physical contact, wear mask 100 percent 
don't take off your mask if possible, you know, and also if possible, don't overstay or overnight. You know? This is not a good uh, way to, you know, re, um, to do that because currently, um, you know that uh, a recent study also saying that the Delta is airborne, you know, you know, airborne, and this is very, um, very hard for us. When you take off the mask, 14 seconds, you can transmit the disease. So that's why um, when, when you're taking the mask down, there's two persons that are at risk. Number one is yourself. Number two is the other party. Eh? Especially you in the house, you know, at the household, which uh, a lot of people running around. I think this is not a good time. Uh, but because uh, doesn't mean that government allow you to do so, you want to do it. You have to really, you know, uh, check, check your choice, you know, choose, choose the risk or read the risk, you know. Maybe you can hold on for a while, you know, wait for the vaccination rate, you know, more than about 16 and above herd immunity. Maybe only consider that you want to walk out. Yeah, this is what I can tell. I uh, can share with you now. Yeah. Now, Doctor Tan, uh, just just an extra question for follow up. You talk about testing, right? And uh, I think some I think some of us are still confused in terms of the in terms. I say either we're symptomatic or if we're not symptomatic, but we think we came close to someone. Uh, is there a specific buffer time in between? before I should, or once I find out like, oh, maybe this person has, or this person, I, I came in contact with close contact, I should test now, or should I wait a bit first before getting tested? Okay, uh, basically, basically the, if let's say today, I just unfortunately, I uh, contact with a person that is positive, uh, they just told you yesterday like that, huh? should you test today? Okay, um, you, might, you might delay 48 hour only test, but however, you need to quarantine now. Yeah, so usually uh, by the 48 hour to 72 hour is the best time to test your PCR. Hmm. But if your next day already got symptom, you definitely need to test that day and uh, don't wait. Uh, don't wait. And as long as you got symptom like sore throat, even now today, the, uh, the alpha is, uh, no, sorry, the delta will give you diarrhea. You see, the, the first symptoms is diarrhea and vomiting, not fever, no cough. So this is a bit confusing whether this is this. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, is food poisoning or is that uh, due to a flu? Or uh, it, it, It's so confusing, the symptom. It's not like the previous COVID that you come to a store to first, you know, fever and cough. So when it's diarrhea, then we have tend to, like, I thought, I thought oh, it's just a diarrhea, so I might not a COVID. So you delay a few days, only you're going testing, but you already go out for, already go out to work, you know, but you forgot to, you know, uh, uh, you should, suppose you should be quarantined now but you went out, you know, go out to uh, do do activities. I think um, this is, uh, so my, my suggest is that when you have a symptom, which is like fever, cough, diarrhea, vomiting, I think a cell test will, you know, really help you to give you some of clue whether you are COVID positive or not. If the first test is negative, I think better to repeat another test between 48, 48 to 72 hours. Then it will give you a very uh, correct uh, diagnosis. Yeah, cell test RTK, uh, RTK the rapid uh, test kit usually is the third day, third day of the illness only can, you know, give you a very high accuracy. For the first day, second day, they won't pick up. But PCR, yes, PCR, they can really pick up even the first, second days, first day, second day. So if you choose to do it today, uh, you want to do test today, um, yeah, you can go. You can go today. Uh, if directly contact with the person, you can go today. But I think that's a waste of money. That because sometimes uh, the pickup rate is low. So, uh, the, so that's why I say 48 hours to 72 hours is the best time. Yeah. Basically, it's the incubation period and you should wait until, you know, uh, as, as, if you're asymptomatic because you don't want where if you test too soon, uh, too quickly, like, oh, he just called, he just said it got tested and you only met like yesterday uh, and then it becomes this thing like they, it didn't catch now, but then it might manifest in a few more days. Uh, yeah. So that's why a later testing also would be uh, recommended. Mm. Is that? Yeah, uh, usually uh, in the uh, in the some of the publication even say fifth day only you test, it will get you hundred percent correct. Uh, you can pick up the the disease, but I think it's too late. So that's why our, our KKM here usually is forty eight hours to seventy two hours. We need to do the first test. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And Tina, do you have uh, any other questions? Um, I wanted to ask doctor because I know he is a front, he's a medical frontliner in a hospital and he's treating COVID-19 patient. So doctor, can you give us a picture of how is it like in the hospital you are working in right now? All right. Um, maybe I share with you some of the 
uh, situation compared with previous MCO and this time this time MCO. Yeah, the first MCO, uh, we hardly get one or two case of uh, COVID per week per week. Yeah, but the second MCO, which is the late September, uh, almost uh, September October, uh, that time every day we get one or two new cases. Yeah, but now this is the third MCO for the first four week. Every day we have up, up to 20 patients per day, up to 20 patients per day, new cases. Yeah, and when those patients come to hospital, those are ill, they are not those light, uh, uh mild cases. So, but the last two weeks, uh, the, the search is high. Some, some of some of the day we get about 50 per day, 50 new cases per day per hospital. I'm talking about per hospital, not talking about per hot Malaysia. Yeah, so, um, and the cases of this uh, come in, uh, usually it's category 3, which is pneumonia without oxygen, and also category 4, uh, pneumonia, which is a lung infection, need oxygen, and uh, category 5, which have shock. So, um, about 50% of them to 60% is category 4 and 5. So, um, it's all that um, a lot, uh, and even worse is that a majority of uh, patients come in, one third needed the life support, yeah? Um, they need uh, some of them need high flow nasal cannula, which is like a machine that put on the nose very high pressure and also a helmet C pressure. They press the air into your lung because your lung a bit, you know, a bit congested. You need some pressure to the lung to get the oxygen get through. Yeah, uh, and also uh, every day each hospital can have about you know fourteen. You know, in emergency department alone, yeah, got fourteen cases to fifteen cases of ventilator, which is the intubated patient, the ventilator on the machine, life support. And uh, all these patients were strangulated in the hospital for quite some time because ICU, ICU is actually always uh, quite full because each of the ventilator patients may take up to two weeks to three weeks to resolve uh, or recover or, or succumb, you know. So they will take a long time to recover. So that's why the ICU is always, uh, bed is uh, always occupied and full. And it overspilled to you know um, in the emergency department become a next ICU of uh, uh, immediate ICU which is a temporary ICU, but the facility uh, compared with ICU definitely emergency is not a conducive place. But however, the overspill is so much that uh, we need to you know save every life that they come to hospital. So that's why um, we um, we are we are facing a quite a a, a big uh, big uh, search on the COVID. Uh, that we uh, before this never seen before. This is really a, 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 a eye opening um, uh, congestions that uh, we uh, ever you know face. Uh, even I have handled a lot of accident like a bus overturn. You know, into a, uh, there's fifty patient one shot they come in. You know, we can handle mm. in a very mm. short while. But this is very chronic. You know, this is like over six six week or eight week. You know, non stop, non stop, and we we. We cannot, you know, we cannot really, um, you know, disease, uh, the, uh, infection is like a chronic disease, they, 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 they take days. So so when you have keep on patient come in, but the previous patient not yet discharged, it will uh, crowd the whole hospital. And the bed is a bit too full until really, uh, I know that a lot of people have seen a lot of videos circulate here and there uh, of how the hospital is. Uh, it's real. So I, I'm, not, I, I'm not saying anything about, you can say it's real or not, but, but, we are trying our best to, you know, to accommodate whatever uh, patients coming because human life we need to really take care of. Yeah. Mm. Well, what is your hospital doing to get ready for this surge of numbers of people coming in? Um, uh, two, um, I think four weeks ago when the numbers is about eight to nine thousand, we we already expected that. Um, we we because we feel that I think it will come up to you know fifteen k. But it, it really go into the 15k to 70k per day and now 20k per day. We uh, current uh, previous four weeks the numbers is currently is compared with previous four weeks is double. So we we already get ourselves ready for to uh, to to uh, face this situation double of the uh, numbers of the COVID uh, in uh, patient. So we have already increased all the bed capacity. We already increased all the ventilator uh, ventilator bed capacity. And also, we have prepared more manpower to say, uh, to cater to cater this uh, situation. That's why uh, that's why we, uh, the 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 exponential increase of the numbers. We hope that it stay here and come down in the next one or two weeks time. We we really pray for that to you know, the number come down. 
If not, if come become 40k, we are not sure what we're going to happen. Or we hope really next month it come down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doctor, if we were to look at the infographic um, uh, provided by the health ministry every day, uh, usually what are the figures that we, we look at are the figures of um, the fresh cases daily and also how many of, of, of them have died and also the recoveries. But recently what caught the attention of the media is that the number of the, uh, the brought-in deaths, the figure is also on the rise. Sometimes it consists of half of the people that are um, that made of the death figure. So, what can you interpret from this figure, from the brought in death figure? What, what does it tell us? All right. Uh, first of all, you, uh, the brought in death means that a patient passed away uh, outside the hospital, meaning that any facilities that uh, or even at home, the patient uh, passed away, uh, then they brought to hospital. So we call it brought in that, brought into hospital that. So brought in that uh, indicate that uh, there is a severity of the disease. Maybe it's a variant, it causes that uh, acute uh, acute changes of the symptoms and uh, cause acute, uh, turn, turn from the, uh, you know, uh, mild disease become a severe disease quite fast. We, uh, we still yet to get more data on this. Number two is that maybe it's that the overcrowded uh, hospitals that uh, spillage out, you know, uh, maybe uh, everybody thought uh, the hospital is too full and then they delay come to hospital. It's hard to come to hospital, no bed. Everybody know that they hear about this news about no bed. So maybe this, uh, uh, that the, the fear of bringing the families to hospital or maybe there's hard to reach the hospital that might cause this uh, situation. So um, brought in that definitely also will increase when the numbers of uh, cases of confirmation, uh, confirmation cases is increased. Uh, all the all the country when the numbers increase definitely there's a lot of cases that will you will you know diagnose late you know or or they and also they they tend to come to hospital late uh, because a lot of patient right and also and I and also uh, I feel that also there is also another a problem is that uh, maybe the informations that uh, reach to the uh, caretaker you know caretaker is or, or the patient themselves is uh, for how to how to you know warn them uh, when is the warning uh, the uh, warning uh, time warning warning uh, warning symptoms that you need to bring to hospital maybe i can share with you some of the warning sign uh, what, what sorry maybe i can share with you some of the warning signs symptom that uh, you should alert yourself of red flag the uh, red flag sign i think that would be bring. good because i think recently yeah. also i've been hearing uh, from people that i know is like oh my husband mm. or wife or even my, my yeah. uh, child suddenly has uh, developing symptoms. But then, you know, they're a bit hesitant. Should I bring to hospital? Should I not? And this is a very difficult decision for some people. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it would be good that you can elaborate on the red flags. Yeah, I, I definitely, definitely, I, I would like to share this because I think um, I, I this is some tips that we can use when we monitor ourselves or even uh, your loved one uh, when they are in quarantine. Um, Stanley, um, <clears throat> Uh, everybody know that when you when somebody got COVID, they need to be isolated in an isolated room and quarantined, right? Definitely, there's a lack of uh, monitoring uh, and from the person who want to take care of them, or ourselves. When we get sick, usually we are ne we will neglect ourselves, you know, uh, by not taking a lot of uh, food, enough food, or no, uh, take medicines because we always usually we will feel oh I'm tired, so I want to sleep, you know, keep on sleeping. So um. For me, uh, the red flag sign number one, red flag sign is that you have a severe tiredness. We call it lethargic uh, or tiredness that you cannot even you know wake up, uh, wake, wake up yourself and go to the toilet and walk to the toilet yourself. Usually, you 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 can you can walk to the toilet by yourself, but this few days really you can't. You know, but the body ache is bad. You know, you have no energy at all. Then you walk to the toilet also need help. Uh, so, um, so this is the first red flag sign you need to know. Or your, if you noted that your parents or your family members who are always sleeping, and when you call them, tell, uh, 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 arouse them, make them wake up. They wake up a while, and then they talk to you a few words, and then they go and sleep. You know, this is also a sign of lethargic or we call it tiredness. This is uh, the first red flag sign that you need to you know uh, bring to hospital. Number two red flag sign is that uh, you. Number two is that. Uh, you uh the patient is not eating well yeah they have no appetite at all and they couldn't even swallow anything even uh water 
yeah so um, when they're eating poorly for me uh, if you could uh, uh, 80% of the normal diet if you can intake of this this target is considered good but if his intake of his normal diet of 80 uh, I mean when the intake is compared with the previous diet less than 80% then you have to really most monitor closely if he reached the 50 percent definitely he, he is not doing well so you need to really uh, bring him to hospital or you know some of the some of the patient not even taking food for two days yeah because of the poor appetite you know and also they are lethargic and yeah? the the, the uh, because also the loss of smell and less of taste that cost them no appetite or this 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 second warning sign also need to bring uh, bring them to hospital all right, or go to the nearest CAC for a checkup. Yeah, the third one is that um, when your saturation oxygen, if you let's say you have some, uh, but I I don't use the saturation. You should say you are breathlessness when you feel very difficult on in uh, on breathing. You can't couldn't breathe properly, or you feel that you hard to breathe. You feel shortness of breath. Uh, that is also a third warning sign that you need to come to hospital. Even um, if you have at home, if you've got any oximeters, if you have less than 94 and below, please uh, please also bring them to the nearest CAC to check up or hospital to check up. So these three warning signs that I share with you is important because this will prevent this brought in death. Because some of some of us didn't note these three. Actually, these three is a sepsis, you know, the early sepsis symptom that will 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 uh, uh, bring somebody to uh, severe disease and uh, uh, eventually will pass away so that's why this tree is the first uh, warning sign and uh, uh, saying that the patient is not fighting well huh? so when you know these three things if you see either one either one you already need to bring for assessment yeah so this is what i want to share with you thank you would you encourage uh you know, some people want to, I, and it's quite understandable that some family members want to go a bit above and beyond. And then they say like, okay, they want to try to self-medicate. They say, why don't you take this? Uh, and then maybe you, uh, maybe that uh, difficulty in breathing would, would, would subside. Oh. Or why not we, uh, to some extent, I've even heard that they are considering buying their own oxygen tanks, uh, mm. you know, mm. in order for them to uh, pass this whole COVID-19 uh, so-called symptoms. Is that something that you would encourage? Okay. Um, uh, first of all, cell medication is uh, quite a dangerous uh, action because I, I, I against for those uh, medication is uh, should be a prescribed medication to be uh, cell medicated. Huh? But those in the over counter medicine, you can still uh, purchase like uh, paracetamol or those uh, uh, flu medicine. Yeah. But for oxygen uh, supplement, oxygen supplement at home, it, that is a very dangerous uh, situation. Why? Um, oxygen is a kind of medicine if you have a high concentration. So a uh, problem is that when the patients needed oxygen and uh, needed oxygen, then you provide the oxygen at home, meaning that they might, you know, their lung is started to have a bad infection. They should have, you know, come to hospital as soon as possible not uh, cell medicate, cell oxygenation at home, then uh, delay the treatment in the hospital. Yeah, so so I think the oxygen concentrator or oxygen uh, supply uh, should be uh, uh, advised, should be, you know, when you want to purchase, you'd be advised from the doctor, meaning that maybe you had already received your treatments, you know, uh, in the hospital, and later on when back home, you need some oxygen supply, then doctor will prescribe that, and then they will be monitoring you. And also, oxygen tank is a very dangerous, uh, dangerous uh, uh, we call it, uh, equipments at home. It can be easy flammable and can be uh, explosive as well, if you not handle well. Eh? And also, if you give a wrong dose of the oxygen to the patient, it can cause uh, uh, blindness eh, for long term. Yeah, so that's why I I urge that uh, currently uh, don't sell, uh, don't purchase any oxygen concentrated unless was. Uh, advised by the doctor who are really treating your parents or families and also unless you're staying very remote you know you need about six hours to uh, 12 hours to come to hospital you know so remote area that is a different story that will be uh, the, uh, we, we, we can consider on that you know very far away from hospital yeah but current facility and hospital uh, I think uh, you should uh, walk into hospital. If you couldn't go to hospital, you go to nearest CAC 
or, or even the, you know, the few hospital, they will give you oxygen immediately. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Doctor, there's a question uh, from the floor. Uh, it's by uh, Miss Lily Chan. She said that my husband is a diabetic and stroke patient and his private doctor advised him not to go for a vaccination now. So she asked if you have any comment on this. Oh, um, hi, Lily. Hi. Uh, definitely, uh, no, I think you should go to, uh, okay, first of all, I think you, sh you should bring your husband to injection, yeah? There is a lot of uh, vaccines, uh, there's no contraindication at all for this uh, diabetic or stroke patient to get their vaccination. Okay, if this, um, you should go to another PPV or any hospital, yeah, to, to get, uh, get him injected. It, it shouldn't be any, you know, contraindication, uh, there is no, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, since we since we're looking at some of the common uh, questions over there, and uh, I think this is a very timely question as well from Afrin. As I am pregnant for thirty weeks and had my first dose of vaccine, now I'm so worried. Uh, yeah, the, it has been highlighted uh, in the news. Even the Health DG has brought it up yesterday as well. You know, uh, what are the uh, are there any safety concerns when it comes to pregnant women and COVID nineteen vaccines? Okay, uh, thanks for the questions, Afrin. I, uh, for you, I think you shouldn't be worried. Yeah, there's a lot of data on this. Uh, as long as your pregnancy is above 12, 12 weeks and above, yeah, uh, you, all vaccine is safe for you. Even the mRNA, like, such as like uh, those brands we're using mRNA uh, method, also is safe for you because the baby's bone uh, and organs are really well formed. So there will be uh, no harm to the baby and as well as yourself. Because uh, compared with the risk of not vaccinated, uh, pregnant lady have a high risk of getting uh, COVID and uh, COVID death. Eh? The risk is uh, much more higher, maybe 24 to 34. So uh, you, I think you have done a very good job. You have your first dose already. Yeah, just continue with your second dose. And even when you have, uh, you know, pregnant lady, when they want to go for delivery that time, they need to go to hospital, right? If you're vaccinated, definitely you have protected yourself from uh, getting a severe disease. That is also a way of how to protect you and your baby as well. And uh, no worry about the baby. They are very, uh, they are no harm at all for this uh, vaccination. Eh? And they won't uh, uh, cross any, uh, uh, cause any, you know, mutation or anything to, or cause harm to your baby. So uh, for me, um, uh, this is uh, why why DG uh, yesterday talked about this is because there is a uh, currently there's uh, uh, just share with you there's seventy eight case of cases of uh, pregnancy death yeah which is very unfortunate and uh, or is not vaccinated yeah or, or not really properly vaccinated which is only one dose yeah and uh, they are already in the delivery state yeah and also that uh, even if you already receive your first dose, you are not fully immunized. Huh? So you need to uh, very carefully protect yourself. Don't go out and don't meet any strangers or, or try not to eat out. So uh, wear your mask 24-7 if possible. Wash your hand and uh, try not to you know off your mask while talking to anybody, even though your par your families uh, who are not staying with you, you know, or those who have worked, well, those family members who work in the working place and then they always need to come back home. Try to avoid, you know, to have a, a, cons a constant contact with them because um, this is a, a risk uh, for you to, uh, uh, the, the risk that can transmit COVID, yeah. So 30 weeks is good, then you just need to have a second dose and then you should uh, good and uh, you can go for a uh, safe safe delivery yeah is and uh, by extension is it safe if you're trying uh, to get vaccinated if you're trying to conceive or you you just found out that you got pregnant okay there's two things uh, here yeah pre pregnancy means that you you might you know uh, you will plan to you plan to get baby yeah so the first advice is that if you plan to have baby, uh, definitely uh, you are advised to have your two doses of vaccine first before you do conceive. Yeah, even you want to do for test tube baby or you don't want to induce, you also need to you know properly vaccinated only plan for that. This is the first advice. Uh, or this is similar that uh, similar to our you know our KKM recommendation for those who are already pregnant in the first twelve weeks. Okay. The first trial week is the most vulnerable time for, uh, for, for the baby 
to get vac uh, when you get vaccinated. So that's why until now we still uh, not enough data to support uh, the vaccination of less than twelve weeks pregnancy. Yeah, uh, if 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 there is a lot of uh, uh, indication means that uh, the patient is high risk. They got uh, the the mother have a heart 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 disease. You know, have uh, uh, even chronic disease like diabetic or or they need protection early. Yeah, so they uh, the the vaccinator means that the hospital will give uh, you explain the risk all this thing and discuss properly. Yeah, discuss properly. Yeah, to, uh, before they give the injection, there is uh, data a very uh, scar. Uh, uh, I call it a very little data on twelve week uh, pregnancy, but there is there is, but it's not enough to prove that it's safe. But there is show some positive trends of less than 12, years, 12 weeks pregnancy, getting vaccine, still protective and uh, safe for baby. But this is a uh, very scanty uh, data. We, we cannot recommend that yet. So mm -hmm. uh, for us, for the 12 weeks and below, please protect yourself as if that you are not, not vaccinated, like, you know, 24-7 wear masks, not to meet any strangers, don't go out, you know, uh, sanitize your hand, every day you know and uh, try to avoid to talk to any person who work outside and come back to home try I know, not to i know mm. this is going to be a tough question because you're talking about like the data but why i asked it was uh because someone asked i didn't know that i was pregnant when i had my first okay. dose at week one and week two should i continue to take the second dose okay uh definitely uh the second dose need to be deferred um, I know that um, we had we had few uh, because previously also I I did have uh, follow up a lot of vaccinated uh, 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 group of people. Um, some of them uh, during the first dose uh, after the first dose only confirm pregnancy. Yeah, so we defer we defer the second dose until it's more safe. Meaning after twelve weeks of pregnancy only for the second dose. Yeah. So, so Alicia should wait until. Her, yeah, uh, Alicia should wait now. Yeah. Don't 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 go for the second dose until. But I think you should consult the ONG specialist first before. Uh, I, I because case by case basis, yeah, Alicia. I'm not saying that I am expert, but I just want to let you know that you need to consult your ONG specialist first before uh, follow what I said. Yeah, yeah, I think I think consulting uh, would be better to always get always get a, a more more information. Opinion. Yeah. yeah, for information yeah. and the your 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 ONG specialist will be more. You know. Uh, uh, more understand about this situation, yeah. Mm. And uh, again, sorry, again, by extension also breastfeeding, what about breastfeeding mothers? Oh, hi, Michelle, yeah, sure. Um, breastfeeding, currently there's a lot of evidence showing that breastfeeding mother is suitable to get vaccinated and it won't affect the baby at all. So, so as long as after delivery uh, and your body is okay, meaning that you are feel strong enough, you know, and no more, you know, confinement is quite tough, right? During the confinement, if you feel you're more, you know, say you're healthy, you're back, you can regain your body energy or uh, your regains from some, the delivery, post-delivery tired and uh, healing, then you can immediately get your first jab and second jab. Yeah, no problem at all. Now, is there a vaccine preference in the, uh, for pregnant mothers or breastfeeding mothers or, you know, but all kinds of vaccines would be better than no vaccine. Oh, um, currently all vaccines suitable for breastfeeding. This is a good news. So there's no any um, uh, which is better. So um, our currently in Malaysia we offer all vaccine is suitable for breastfeeding patient. Yeah. Hmm. If I choose to just boost up my immunity uh, rather than taking the vaccine as a pregnant mother, would that be enough? Um, okay, um, this is also some of the uh, friends uh, really ask me, okay, how we know that we really boost up our immunity because there's no test to test it, right? So I understand that also there is a lot of way to eat healthily, you know, eat healthily to boost up immunity, but also sleep well is another way to boost, boost, up, boost up your immunity, yeah? But I, I still... Uh, for a pregnant lady, definitely they are, I, I understand all the mothers, you know, pregnant mothers, they are very tired every day. They have to, you know, you have an, another person in their body. So I'm, 
they they can take you know extra food to make sure but you should still remember that you still to have to remember the weight uh, don't overweight as well uh, a two to overweight um, mother will have a bigger cho- baby bigger baby is hard for delivery but I think, just uh, sorry i think i think the question was uh if boost up immunity that is it necessary then to take vaccination oh sorry uh, sorry sorry for phone yeah definitely yes um if uh um you just you know immunity for us is naturally occurred you no need to boost up because we are really good immunity if uh, we are healthy all right so if you say the boost definitely is you before your immunity uh, imu- before your vaccination you ca- you you just need to you know sleep enough you, you have to get enough rest and also eat normally eat balance yeah you can do that you can do that definitely but uh if you don't do that is let's say you poor sleep you know you eat very less when you go for vaccination definitely will add up you know your body uh, uh but your body will have strain strain your body because you have baby but so get definitely vaccinated as well right yeah but definitely you you need to get vaccination. To get vaccinated. Yeah. definitely you have to get vaccinated meaning that you have to eat well and sleep well before you go for vaccination this is what i want to say yeah okay uh Tina? Yep. And um, I wanted to also ask Dr. Is is already a fact that we have to live with COVID-19, but you know, in your opinion, at this point of life, right? What can we what else can we do to help prevent the spread of COVID-19? Just coming back to the topic. Uh, I think I think this is a uh, quite a quite a important uh, topic to discuss about um, what is uh, COVID really uh, going to be. Yeah. Um, for me also, I in my lifetime, this is the first time I really into a, what such a great pandemic. So um, for us, living with COVID is part of uh, current um, uh, we call it strategy, you know, to cope with uh, the situations. Because uh, in the meanwhile, while waiting for herd immunity to reach 80%, uh, what we can only do is to do a prevention measurement, which is uh, protect yourself by doing all the SOP. Every day we remind you and remind you and remind you like, you know, uh, put up the mask and wash your hand. Even now you say double mask, you know, uh, for, for those who uh, don't want to prevent the airborne. And also uh, for to to, st- uh, to embrace the situation because I think a lot of uh, our friends here have... Um, they have uh, depressions because of this uh, chronic chronicity of this pandemic. The depression is real, you see, because of isolations, homes, uh, quarantine. When you isolated yourself uh, uh, prior to, you know, uh, we, we long time never have ourselves to get uh, ourselves in the home for so many years, uh, one and a half years. Plus, also, if what suddenly we got this COVID, you know, COVID is so so much of negative negative news about COVID that make us fear, you know. So this fear and uh, uh, isolations will add up uh, uh, and fasten the you know fasten our depressions, yeah. And which also it will uh, lead to a suiciding thought, which I I hope really everybody have to remember, this is uh, not a good. Uh, good way to cope with the current situation. Uh, there's a lot of way that uh, we can uh, help each other, uh, help each other to reduce, uh, to prevent this to this mishap, mishap to happen. Uh, you can always use the digital, you know, uh, the phone, you know, the computer, you know, can you know talk, uh, 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 Skype, you know, face to face to talk about it. And also, you can also try to talk to some counseling uh, hotline. Uh, we have a lot of counseling hotline, like Refendos, even uh, some organization. I, I, there's a, a long list. You can simply just search, you know, in any way. Yeah, I can get it. Or you can, you know, come to, you know, some. You can come to my Facebook and, you know, talk talk to me. That's okay. I always open to you. And also, um, you can, you know, see some psychiatrist doctors uh, if you have uh, pre-existing uh, psychiatrist illnesses like you have depression before and and uh, maybe got some trait of uh, anxiety. You should, you know, come back to your doctors to talk about it. And also, please share. Please always share <coughs> your difficulties with friends. Don't be shy about the difficulty because everybody is difficult now. As long, especially when you have financial crisis, no loss of job, and your and your parent, your your loved one is sick. 
everybody uh, in uh, everything is in uh, at, at one time you know you can always you know talk to somebody and don't feel you know fear or or, or shame to seek for help uh, if you have no food please tell everybody will support each other i think malaysian have this good you know samaritans everybody is very kind uh, to to you know you support i i can see you know uh, even though such a tough you know covid pandemic I can see a lot of love, you know, even in our, you know, among ourselves. There's so much, you know, so much of uh, support when you say you need help. I can see so much of touching, uh, touch, touching story, you know, sharing among uh, each other to support. And there's a lot of support group, even, you know, support group for loss of the loved one, support of loss of parents, support group for children who want to go to, uh, go to school, all these facilities, you know, support on food bank, even, you know, um, support on social, uh, I mean the um, the mental mental stress or uh, psychology support. Uh, I think uh, this is where you need to seek for help. Try mm. to embrace, you know, try to embrace uh, this uh, current situation. I I I can see we can get through this. You know, we we can see this. Uh, we can get through it. Maybe time, you know, time. You just need to give some time for this to go on. But I think everybody have adapted the one and a half year self-quarantine at home i think everybody is already velvet on all this gadget you know can you know get connected yeah yeah so, because before before yeah. the vaccine we're all waiting for the vaccine to arrive and yeah. we count on it to to uh, hopefully that you know things will, will get better but we also know that the, the virus they are not resting as well and they are mutating you know from from alpha to gamma to delta and now we have the lambda right so I was going to ask, you know, can we ever get back to our normal life as in pre-COVID days? And what is your view on that? Okay. First of all, if there's a, there's a four things I always share with the uh, uh, public about when a pandemic will end. Yeah. The first thing is that, yeah, the pandemic won't end definitely. It will continue on forever until... The, the whole human race will rise up. This is the, the worst scenario that I can tell. Uh, number two, when the vaccine is working, so the pandemic will end, meaning that everybody will vaccinate this end. Okay? Number three, maybe suddenly, you know, the virus is merciful. Uh, it mutates into a very light form uh, or not harmful form. Then we also uh, get rid of this pandemic. Or number four, we get a cure which is the antivirus that can really kill these uh, viruses. So in the meanwhile, uh, we have vaccine, you know, we have hope. We still have hope, you know, for follow the second, you know, for a uh, second route to achieve it. But we need to be fast. We need to be fast to get our vaccine fast because if you don't get your vaccine fast, the mutation fast, then the vaccine loss of its efficacy, uh, efficacy and then they have to use another new vaccine, it will take time. So it will drag on the pandemic. That's why, to reach 80% herd immunity is the most important task now because we have a weapon, which is vaccine. So please, please, you want to go back to the pre-COVID time, we need to have our vaccine as soon as possible to be the first uh, at most important agenda that we need to fight this pandemic and let this pandemic end. So the mutation, why? When your vaccine works fast, the mutation won't be so fast anymore. So we need to catch up this timeline. So that's why I, I encourage you, if you can, possible today, you know, if your appointment is there, don't cancel and go ahead. You know, if you have a difficulty of getting the vaccine, you know, uh, find out, go to PPV center to ask the information counter and get them to help you. Yeah. We're going to wrap up this live stream very soon, but uh, just two more questions. Okay. One coming from uh, someone who is about to get the second uh, dose for the vaccine. My second dose coming Monday, on four, uh, but on 4th of August, my brother and I went to do the swab test and it's positive. I have been self-quarantined. Uh, can I go to the second dose on Monday? I'm worried. Thanks, doctor. Hi, Shirley. I'm sorry to hear that about your brother is positive and um, I'm so sorry for, for, for you to you know get yourself... Um, hopefully, you're not, not positive, all right? So, um, you are not allowed to... I think to, both were so positive uh, yeah. back then, uh, on August 4th. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, both of them. Yeah, sorry, I didn't read that. Okay, I'm so sorry to hear that as well, Shirley. All right, you, can, you have to defer your second dose until you end the quarantine. 
yeah, 10 days, only you can get your, can go for the, uh, you can immediately go for your second jab. How provided that when you end your quarantine, there's no more symptoms like cough, fever, or any like a diarrhea, then you can go for your second dose immediately. So um, for at least I know, at least you've got the first dose. I, I'm not very worried about that. Mm -hmm. So you should. So that which means after yeah? ten, after quarantine mm -hmm. period, uh, yeah, after so it's not just like after period after after quarantine period immediately okay. So but then okay. we're looking at this one is August fourth and then self quarantine. But it really depends on when the CAC tells you is the end. Uh, the the faster way the faster way if you want to you know uh, make sure that your quarantine is uh, within the uh, time is you walk into CAC immediately. Mm -hmm. Shirley just get, added a, a comment saying that she, yeah. I think she's oh, clarifying she's that she's not positive. Yeah. Oh, it's okay, not, right? Sorry. Yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, okay. Shirley. Sorry about that as well, because I saw my brother and me went to do okay. it. In the if Shirley yeah. is not, if Shirley is not positive, uh, you also have to finish your quarantine only can go for the second jab. This is uh, by policy because in any time uh, you need to uh, monitor or second swap. So uh, you uh, you need to quarantine yourself for 10 days, only can go for the second second test. So currently, you need to reappointment yourself, meaning that your MySuggestion app there, you need to reappointment. All right, Sally? Okay, so uh, one last question here. Uh, we have one commenter ask, what are your thoughts on Ivermectin? And that's really the hot topic that's going on right oh. now as well. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. I, I, I know that there is a, 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 a hot debate on these medications, uh, which is uh, uh, due to the first publication from the in vitro uh, lab. Eh? Uh, but the paper actually is not very uh, enough uh, to, uh, to, to conclude in the human body testing. And uh, Ivermectin in Malaysia currently is not in a blue book. Huh? It's not in a blue book. Uh, the reason uh, off label use of uh, ivermectin is for trial, meaning that it's for uh, research purposes, not for uh, uh, common in, uh, prescriptions. So uh, currently, the government is still doing the research. I, uh, they're almost concluding. So in uh, September, they will come out the result. So um, the government is trying hard to help to solve these issues. And I myself personally uh, know that uh, I learned these medications uh, for. for since medical school, um, but this is a class B poison. Uh, it can cause liver failure and uh, li liver liver failure, uh, and also it can cause neuro neurotoxin if in the high dose. So um, uh, this is a because it's off label, so need to be a, a prescription and also need to be a doctor, uh, and also need to be. Uh, in the research, yeah, research purposes only can use. So there's, you cannot, in Malaysia, we cannot sell this medication in any way because it's not in the blue book. It's a, a illegal way, a illegal, um, it's a, under the act of a pharma pharmaceutical, they cannot sell this drug uh, for human use. So um, there's a policy that in place that uh, we, uh, the professional body need to adhere to. Uh, I am not anti anything, but this is how uh, the things is work. Uh, we just follow the SOP, SOS. As long as the, the study is ongoing, I think uh, we shall wait for the answer from the research. But there's a lot of other, other uh, there's also Brazil paper uh, and uh, when you publish soon. So uh, currently, uh, government also come out with meta-analysis on uh, ivermectin use in uh, COVID and uh, shows there's no any effectiveness. And uh, so, uh, at the point of a scientist as well as a doctor, so I have to base on evidence uh, to say, say something on this lah. So um, for me, uh, don't sell medicate, do not sell medicate, uh, and uh, try your best uh, to use uh, the way, proper way to treat yourself. Yeah, if you got you need help, uh, please, uh, we are open to help you. Yeah, don't do sell medicate. Yeah, very dangerous. Thank you. But Doc, okay. before we wrap up, mm -hmm. is there anything that you think we haven't covered or is, is there anything that you like to tell people? Oh, thank you, yeah. Tina. This is a very important message for me. Uh, COVID, even though you see every day you read the news, uh, COVID is very dangerous or what, but 80% to 90% of, uh, of uh, COVID patients is category 1 and 2. Uh, usually they will sell here if you can, uh, provided that you have no any chronic diseases and provided that you force yourself to eat. The only treatment for any virus that no antivirus available is uh, nutrition. Means that you have to eat. Yeah, don't you don't need to be a, a, a very well balanced nutrition as long as you can eat, and the food is go into your stomach and digest and go into your body. That's more than enough. Yeah, any fever 
it's good news because your body is fighting. But however, if you've got fever, you need to eat something to uh, provide a constant energy for your body to fight. This is why I'm saying so. Like a flu. If you've got a flu, you rarely, you know, when you've got a flu, you, you just will sell heal. Yeah? Okay, those who go to category 4 and 5, definitely their body actually pre-existingly is not healthy. That's why they will go into this 4 and 5. So um, you yourself also need to remember, you need to always check yourself whether you are healthy in current situation, in current situation, either, uh, do you have any diabetic hypertension? If you haven't checked yourself, I think this is a time where you go for a checkup uh, in a clinic uh, uh, to, to see whether you are pre-existing health. Uh? If you can, uh, if you have any chronic diseases, if you control properly with medication like diabetic, you eat your medicine, your hypertension, eat your medicine, you should be safe from that. The third thing, vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. Vaccines is only way to exit this pandemic in the meanwhile while waiting for antivirus. All right, so don't fear about this. Do do not fear about COVID. COVID is just a disease. Our hospital, we we just we can fight and we can win, as long as we you seek help. If you you don't know anything, you need some knowledge. We will always help you to to solve your you know, your doubt. Don't fear to ask. Yeah, don't keep it to yourself. And when you depressed, share with us. We talk to us, we will really want to help you. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of people want to support you. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, doctor.